Well, that's easy. Pick up a blade bait up shallow and they eat it. Not a giant, but it's a bass. Caught him on that Demiki vault. You guys, today's video, we are talking about blade baits and jigging spoons. It is fall time and you need to be throwing them right now. Today's video, we're covering some tips, some tricks, some rigging options to help you catch more fish on blade baits and jigging spoons. Let's go. So as you can see guys, bass love blade baits. You know, this time of the year, as you can see, it's fall. Leaves are changing, leaves are falling. The fall, the winter drawdown, you can see here on Chickamauga, they dropped it like five or six feet already. So it is pulling those fish out of the backs of the bays, out to the closest deep water. It's, it's literally taking all those fish from the back and bait fish and pushing them, funneling them down into the deep water access. So it makes it really, really easy to find fish. But today's video, we're talking about blade baits and how you can take advantage of those fish, those schooled up fish that are taking advantage of those balls of bait being moved to where they can eat. So you guys know fall time, we love throwing lipless crankbaits, either the Jackal, the TN70, the, uh, the LV500, been throwing that for years, but lipless crankbaits fall time go hand in hand. But today we're talking about silent blade baits. Ow, those hooks are sharp. Silent blade baits to take advantage of the same fish, just more uh, finesse. You know, when you're when you're fishing behind guys, you know, there's a lot of TOCs going on right now. There's a lot of fishing pressure as uh, the season kind of comes to an end. A lot more boats on the water before they hang them up and uh, pick up the, the bows and rifles, but there's just a lot more uh, people throwing lipless crankbaits this time of the year. And, and for good reason, they work, right? You know, some of our biggest fish I've ever caught, some of my biggest fish I've ever caught, you know, double digits were on lipless crankbaits. So um, blade baits is something that we started talking to you guys about uh, several years ago. And uh, it's just a staple in our arsenal. And we really want it to be in yours too, because it, I, I guarantee it, it will help you put more fish in the boat if you are fishing uh, lipless crankbaits. You know, to have that one, two punch, you know, you can go out and throw the Jackal TN70 or the LV500 or whatever, you know, the Strike King, the Red Eye Shad, whatever it may be, and you might be catching fish, but switching it up and going silent on them, going a little bit more finesse, maybe adding a little bit of flash, that really gives you a good one-two punch to take advantage of those schools of fish. So now that we kind of covered why you should be throwing a blade bait, um, let's talk about uh, some different options. We'll talk about some different baits, some of my, my key baits and why, and then we'll talk about some, some uh, tips on how to rig them, how to upgrade, add some flash to them, uh, just make them a little bit more different than the guys that are throwing traditional blade baits. So uh, hands down, you guys just saw me catch that. <laughs> I literally just pulled up to this bank and got set up for, for the video and decided to make a cast out there and, and caught one. That is the Demiki Vault. Now I will link all these products down below in the video description so you get better pictures, better close up HD pictures of them and everything. But um, it's a really, really simple bait. You know, there's not a lot to it. It's it's pretty much just a piece of metal with, uh, with some split rings, some eyeballs and some paint. You know, there's not a lot to it. You don't need a lot to trick those bass into eating. Right now they are feeding up, they are active, highly aggressive and um, you don't, re you don't really need a lot, but uh, the Dabiki Vault, you can see I went ahead and changed out some hooks on there. Uh, that is the, the number one thing. On almost all of these baits that I'm gonna show you today, I change out split rings and hooks. You know, traditionally we're going after bigger fish and uh, a lot of the stock hardware that comes on most of these baits, um, you can get away with, but you can possibly have your heart broken too. You know, when you're going after, you know, three to 12 pound largemouth, um, you don't want 
a bent out hook to be the reason that you don't get your new PB in the boat. So we highly recommend, um, we'll cover it here later uh, in the video here shortly, but you guys upgrade your split rings and trebles. But the Demiki Vault, I'll show you a stock one right here. And here's the same vault with some uh, upgraded hardware on it. But again, cool little guy. It's just a real finessey lipless crankbait. And um, really, like I said earlier, it's just an easy way to take advantage of those same fish that you'd be catching on a lipless crankbait. But now you need to give them a different bait, a different presentation, uh, go quiet and uh, you can definitely put some really, really big fish in the boat. But the Demiki Vault is hands down our favorite blade bait. Uh, you, know, you can see it comes with size, those are size six hooks on there. Now, um, we always upgrade our hooks, like I said. So down below in the video description, I'll link all the different upgrades to all these different baits. But uh, this guy right here, this is the owner uh, STX 38 Zoe wire. So it's a heavier duty hook. And you can see it doesn't really doesn't overpower the bait. So you will not bend these out. I promise you that unless you're hooked on a log and you're throwing straight braid. But um, that is the first tip guys. Upgrade your, your terminal tackle, um, your your split rings, your hardware, your split rings and your your hooks. So uh, real quick on these, since I'm, I'm talking about it, you're gonna want a number three split ring in the front and a number two split ring hyper wire in the back. And then again, these are number uh, six hooks. You can get away, if you're throwing the smaller guy, you can get away with number eights. But uh, again, it's all about matching the hatch, those smaller bait fish. You can see I got a little bluegill right here, a little baby bluegill. Typically this time of the year, colors are really, really simple. I'm just keeping it natural. Either your, your you know, any, any type of your bait fish colors or your craw patterns. Um, and then obviously a bluegill, you know, to go after those crappie and bluegill eaters. But but back to the, the baits themselves, that Demiki Vault guys, load up on them. They are, they're not too expensive and they are a blast to fish. You know, we've done videos on these in the past. I think last year we did a pretty in-depth video on this as well. But um, again, you're gonna be doing, you know, fire out there and you're gonna just lift the rod on the two different ways I like to fish these. Uh, the first way is just lifting the rod like I was doing right there when I caught that fish. You're just firing out there and just lift your rod tip just enough that you feel that bait flutter three or four times and then fall down. Lift it up, flutter three or four times and fall down. The other way is just to throw it out there and just, you know, just reel, just your your cast and retrieve like you would a, a, a swim bait or a, a chatter bait, something like that. But um, really, really easy to fish. But my, my favorite way to fish them is gonna be that hop technique and just really mimic that dying, fluttering bait fish uh, coming up off the bottom. So we talked about the Demiki Vault. Uh, hands down, that's, that's my favorite. And uh, there's a couple different versions of it. So I showed you the, just the, the basic stock one. I showed you the one with the uh, upgraded hardware and hooks. This guy right here has a little spinner on it. Now, the upside, you get a little bit of flash. Even though you have that silent presentation, you're getting a little more flash. So if you have dingy water or you really wanna mimic that school of bait, adding flash never hurts. The downside is you lose a hook. You know, you just went from six hook points to three. But uh, again, caught a lot of fish on this. But one thing I like to do, guys, oh, I have it rigged on my rod. Instead of having that, that flash in the back, I actually add one of those VMC um, bladed hybrid trebles. They come with the blade and the swivel built into the hook. So now when they hit that flash, um, they're gonna get three hook points in there. So again, you can play around with the different baits. This one, like I said, it's just a, it's gonna be a different fall, different presentation, but uh, that is a great bait as well. Comes in two different sizes. So if you wanna throw one on a spinning rod or you really wanna go after fish or eating that really small bait, you can see the two different sizes right there. But guys, blade baits right now, right now all the way through into the beginning of spring, through spring actually too. But uh, you know, the Silver Buddy was really the first blade bait on the market. And uh, literally a chunk of, 
chunk of metal with some lead on it and uh, really, really shined in cold water. You know, again, just that hopping technique, just, just off the bottom, you know, those fish start to slow down. But these baits right now, it is fall. You know, those fish are aggressive, so you don't have to fish them really slowly like you would in the winter time. So anyways, before I get off on too, uh, too much of a tangent, let's talk about a couple other baits and then we'll talk about some of the, uh, the rigging options and stuff. But uh, number two, is this gonna be this guy right here? This is the Mega Bass Dyna Blade. What's cool about this bait is it has a hand tied, uh, I guess, feather on the back or tinsel, whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't necessarily have to upgrade your hooks on this guy. Mega Bass typically comes with fairly good hooks. Never had an issue. Um, when I do change them out, I do change them out to the same owners that I do on the vault. But uh, this is a more subtle um, blade bait. That, that uh, feather on the back really slows that vibration down. So if you do feel like your fish are getting more pressured or the water is cooling and those fish are starting to shut down, go from the vault, switch over to that, uh, that Mega Bass and um, you guys will have success. Now, a couple different things about these baits. Um, typically, if I'm fishing around grass, I'm throwing braid to mono leader. You know, I wanna be able to rip that braid through the grass. You know, a lot of times, like right now, that, bat, that, that water's getting pulled back, drawn down, and that's putting that grass right on the surface so you're getting this really big grass mat so you want to fish the edges and the the deep spots around the grass so if i do get hung up i want to be able to rip that bait free and a lot of times that's when i'm going to get my reaction strike but if i'm fishing just open water you can get away with uh, straight fluoro if you're fishing clear water more uh, pressured fish finicky fish you know that's when you're going to want to go that fluoro with the with the mega bass right there but um any of your small crankbait rods, I like to throw, I have some really specific ones I like to throw them on. I'll link them all down below in the video description, but that's that little Z crank, that's that uh, destroyer. Obviously we've talked about it for years, that X Pride 610 medium. Um, and then any of your small, smaller crank bar, uh, rods, any fr anywhere from 610 to 7273, something like that with that slower, moderate, fast action um, will work great. But Guys, blade baits, you have to throw them right now. If you guys aren't, you're missing out. Um, I can't stress that enough because it's just a staple in my fall fishing. You know, that that and a topwater, a lipless crank, that, an A-rig maybe, and that is, that is it. Especially if I'm fishing, power fishing, wanting to catch those fish that are really actively feeding up. So we talked about some of the hooks. I'll refresh real quick. Um, those owner STXs, either size six or size eight, depending on the bait and those VMC bladed trebles are really cool if you want to add flash to your bait. Again, upgrade your split rings. Uh, one of the most asked questions about blade bait fishing, uh, when you get some or if you're familiar with them, you'll see that a lot of them have three different snap placements on the top of the bait, the back of the bait. Uh, and what that does, that changes the angle that your bait comes, uh, retrieves to you at. So if I move that snap to the front, that, that it's just gonna change that way that bait um, hops or, or retrieves back to me. If I move it to the back, it's gonna level that bait out. Um, that's gonna be better for vertically fishing. You know, if you're fishing straight down, you wanna hop it straight up and down, you can move it to the rear. But typically, I keep it right in the middle uh, that's just a good all-around placement for that snap and you'll actually see on the mega bass and This next bait I'm going to talk about they don't even give you the option They just keep it the same where it would be in the middle, but um, so the last bait I want to talk about this is actually the jackal keyburn and uh, What makes this bait a little bit different than the other two is these hooks right here You can see it's it's not a true treble hook. It's a two-point hook and what that's for is for fishing on bottom and not getting hung up. Uh, if you're fishing on lighter line, lighter, lighter, softer rods, you can get away with these hooks. If you're fishing a little bit more stout of rods, bigger line, bigger fish, upgrade to those trebles. But that guy right here, again, the Mega Bass and the Jackal, really cool 
uh, really cool, neat paint jobs. You don't have to get too fancy, but uh, they look pretty. So the Domeki Vault, the two different, the bladed and the non-bladed, the Mega Bass, the Dyna Response, and then that Jackal Keyburn are my three favorite blade baits. You know, that Silver Buddy is an awesome uh, way to, to go if you're just getting into, into the blade baits, not too expensive. Um, you know, and then a Blade Runner actually makes a really good uh, replica a bait like the Silver Buddy, but has UV flash. If you're fishing a little bit deeper, you know, say you're fishing a Highland Reservoir, you're fishing deeper water. I'm trying to catch this fish right here fish in uh, deeper water and you just want to add that UV flash to it uh, that blade runner is a great bait as well but hands down my top three are these guys right here and uh, guys lots and lots of fit lots and lots of fish have been caught on these if you're not throwing a blade bait this time of the year you need to be throwing it now quickly real quickly I want to talk to you guys about jigging spoons just a couple real key uh, tips real quick but um, you know, the blade baits, like I talked about, those fish are coming out of the backs of these cuts. This water's getting drawn down. It's corralling those bait fish. Same thing happens out in open water. So your, your bait fish really start balling up and you can find a school of a fish on a ball of bait for weeks at a time. One of the best ways to take advantage of those fish down in deeper water is gonna be a vertical jigging spoon. Now this is hands down, Matt and I is our, our favorite. This is the Dust Spoon uh, by Blade Runner. Got that UV flash on it. I think this color is called uh, Electric Chicken. Again, I'll link all of our favorites down below. But a few different tips for you guys. One, add a swivel on the top. You know, these things are made to fall quickly and uh, mimic a giant bait fish, but it just adds a lot of line twist to your line. Change out your split rings, just like the, the, the blade baits. Change out your split rings and throw a, uh, an owner or Gamakatsu VMC, uh, a better hook on there than the stock hook that comes on it. But um, the last tip I can give you guys, we like to throw our spoons when we can on mono. Now you don't hear us say that a lot because we don't do it a lot. But uh, something with the way that spoon falls and the drag that the mono has that the fluoro or the braid deleter doesn't have, it just keeps that bait from fouling up on the hook and getting tangled up and messing with it when you're jigging it. Again, if you're vertically fishing, you're looking on your electronics and you're looking down there, you see all your, your lasagna or your, your squiggly lines, those fish are down there feeding, getting that spoon down there quickly and catching them quickly is so much fun. Again, completely opposite than the blade bait, fishing shallow. Now you're fishing offshore, fishing deep, but that jigging spoon is a must. And then if you want to target cast or you want to fish a little bit slower, go with that uh, Nichols flutter spoon. Now the tip I'm going to give you on these guys right here, this is a big, you know, five and a quarter, five and a half inch piece of metal. It's fairly light, so it falls really, really well. It doesn't fall too quickly. Throw yourself a bobber stop up on your line and then have a free floating treble hook ran through the eye of the hook uh, just ahead of your bait. That gives you an extra stinger hook on your spoon. Just adds uh, more hook points and helps you get those fish uh, in the boat more often. Guys, I hope you learned something from this video. Again, I can't emphasize uh, blade baits and spoons uh, fishing uh, enough this time of the year. The fish are active, they're feeding up, it's time for you to take advantage of them. Down below, I will link all of my favorite baits, different rigging techniques or options as far as hooks, split rings, colors, uh, rods, reels, line, all that good stuff down below in the video description. But um, get out there guys, don't be afraid of the low water. You know, be careful, you know, make sure you're paying attention to creek channels and stuff. You don't want to hit any debris in the water, but get out on the water and take advantage of your fall fishing because it is good right now. If you have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. As always, guys, thank you for watching. If you learned something or like this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Have a good one.